Welcome to a refresher course in stormwater pollution prevention. This module specifically covers spill prevention and response. The concepts and messages that are included in this training apply to any municipal separate storm sewer system permit, also known as an MS4 permit. All MS4 permits are regulated under the National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System, or NPDES regulations. This training was created by Orange County, who shares the responsibility for protecting surface water from polluted stormwater with several co-permittees, including the cities of Apopka, Belle Isle, Maitland, Winter Garden, Ocoee, Winter Park, Edgewood, the Town of Eatonville, the Valencia Water Control District, and Florida's Department of Transportation. Within Orange County, there are at least three MS4 permits, and all are required to provide this training. Why am I taking this training? If you're taking this training, you need to know how to prevent pollution that could enter lakes, rivers, and ponds through stormwater systems. This is so your organization can be compliant with NPDES regulations that apply to MS4 permit holders. This training is for municipal employees and contractors working for municipalities. Employees and contractors are expected to work safely, prevent spills, clean up discharges, and protect the stormwater systems within the MS4. The state of Florida directs organizations that hold an NPDES permit to have standard operating procedures, also known as SOPs, and annual training on spill prevention and spill response. Your employer has a spill response SOP and is providing this training. You are encouraged to review your employer's SOP at least annually and seek guidance when needed. At the end of this course will be some contact information to help you find answers when you need them. If you work with pollutants or hazardous materials, you should know how to do your job in a manner that prevents spills, how to recognize and quickly assess the nature of a spill, how to contain a spill, and who to report it to. Reporting discharges properly is important because it ensures that effective remedies can be implemented quickly. If you're not sure what your role is in responding to spills, talk to your supervisor and clarify any confusion now so everyone will be knowledgeable in the event that there is a response needed at your facility. The photo in this slide shows liquid seeping out from beneath a containment building onto pavement. As an employee or a contractor working within an MS4, you're expected to take an active role in determining whether a spill has occurred helping get it contained and cleaned up, assisting with any necessary follow-up reporting, and doing your part to ensure that similar spills do not take place in the future. Preventing releases begins with you. Some of the tools you can use include regular inspections of work areas, equipment, and storage buildings, good housekeeping practices that keep small spills under control, and ensure containers are labeled as to their contents. Closed containers, and sometimes this might mean using special lids that make dispensing and filling less prone to accidental spills. Storing chemicals so that they're compatible with their containers and with other chemicals. Properly maintaining equipment, such as hydraulic machines and vehicles, so that small leaks are discovered or prevented before they become major discharges. The large photo in this slide shows several issues. There are open containers, containers with no labels, containers that are not easily accessible, and there's no spill response materials. Upon closer inspection, the floor of the containment building had petroleum liquid pooling beneath the elevated grate, as shown in the smaller image. Another aspect of preventing discharges is knowing where the drains at your facility lead to. Some drains will flow to sanitary sewer, some drains will flow to oil water separators, some flow to septic tanks, some flow to French drains, some flow to stormwater ponds, there are even drains that flow straight to surface water bodies. You must make sure that you know where liquids are going before you allow anything to enter a facility or a parking lot drain and determine if the discharge to that drain is legal. When you're working in an area that has inlet drains, always prevent spills from entering them. Letting a small spill flow into an inlet can result in huge problems. You could have pollution of water bodies from contamination, 
violations of MS4 permit requirements and county ordinances, monetary penalties, and even third-party lawsuits if a neighbor's property is contaminated from your activities. What is your plan when a spill occurs? Do you respond or do you run? Do you know what you're expected to do? Job sites might have heavy equipment, chemicals, and lots of activities going on. Some spills are small and some are large and complicated. The time for training is before an event. Look at your job site or facility, identify the likely emergencies that could possibly take place, and begin preparing now by making sure everyone has proper personal protective equipment and knows the response plan to follow. Host practice drills, find gaps in your system and make adjustments as needed. Before you even begin to respond to a spill, you must know if you can do it safely and only respond when that is possible. A few questions to ask yourself are what is my role in the event of a spill? What equipment is available to me to use and do I know how to use it? If you haven't been trained on how to use some equipment, you should call a trained person to help. Who needs to be notified? Depending on your role in the organization, this might be your supervisor or the owner of the property or the state watch office or the National Response Center. During an emergency, no matter how small or large the incident is, you want to have staff that know their roles and feel confident about performing the duties expected of them. Keep people safe, address the emergency effectively, and limit your costs. Do this by having written plans that address the most likely incidents that could occur based on your operations. Some of the items in your plans should specify evacuation procedures, site access controls, spill response procedures, reporting protocols, and the measures that are needed to keep people safe. When facility staff are expected to respond to spills, OSHA requires that you have an emergency response plan and a health and safety plan. This slide shows images of just a few pieces of protective equipment for your eyes, skin, and feet. The items you or your staff will need should be determined by your operations, the chemicals you use, and your job site characteristics. You don't have to know how to respond to every type of hazardous material emergency, but you should always be prepared to respond to spills involving the equipment and chemicals that you use at your job site. Spill kits should contain the materials you would need for your particular worksite issues. You may need different spill response equipment to address caustics, mercury-containing devices, petroleum, or other types of chemicals on site. Some spills might involve powders, some might involve liquids, some might go to pavement, and others to water. Be ready and stock accordingly. A good idea is to conduct mock spill responses where workers can practice using the equipment, working together, and identifying opportunities to improve the facility response plans. Doing drills also helps determine if personal protective equipment is sufficient or if you need adjustments. Do you know where your spill kit is located? If your spill control equipment is in an out-of-the-way place, not in the area where the hazardous materials are being used, or trapped behind heavy items that block your access, you will lose precious time trying to retrieve it during an emergency event. Worse, workers may not address spills if they feel that the equipment is too hard to get to. Another problem might be that the container is empty when you open it. Keep your spill response materials relevant to your activities, replenished after each use, and readily available at all times. If a spill occurs, Always remember that protecting yourself and other humans is the number one priority. Secure access to the impacted area right away to keep others from making the situation worse and take care of your clothing and body to decontaminate any spill residue next. During the response, stay calm and keep your wits about you. Think about the training you've received and use it to drive the response. Consult your resources if you have to, that's what they're there for. Resources can include the site response plans, your supervisor, reference materials, websites, equipment, and other trained employees. Address the spill immediately, but carefully. Take the time you need to make conscious, educated, and safe decisions as you move forward toward cleanup and restoration. When approaching small spills, the main concerns are that they be cleaned up immediately 
and manage for proper disposal. Determine the best spill cleanup course of action to collect the spill. This might be sweeping up with kitty litter or using absorbent spill pads, for instance. Place the soiled media into appropriate containers and label them as to their contents. Secure the waste by tightly closing the lid and make arrangements for the waste to be properly disposed in accordance with federal, state, and local regulations. Dealing with large spills can be complicated and they may get dangerous if not addressed swiftly and efficiently when they first are detected. Uncontrolled discharges become extremely costly and sometimes life-threatening. Your facility should have arrangements already in place with local emergency authorities and a cleanup contractor. But if not, now is a great time to review your plans and implement some changes. The next few slides will show some examples of things you can do to help control a situation until the responders arrive. If you can find the source of the discharge and know how to safely stop the flow, do it. Once the source is under control, move towards containing the discharge and protecting the stormwater system from the material that already spilled. Once the source has been turned off, use whatever materials you have to keep the spill from getting larger or impacting the stormwater system. In this photo, workers used shovels that were on the work truck to use soil from the right-of-way and build an earthen dam in an attempt to keep diesel fuel from traveling to the storm drain inlet. If you are responding to a discharge, try to keep the spills from flowing into water or onto bare ground. In this photo, absorbent materials were used to create an initial barrier for containing the spill to the paved area until the emergency responders could arrive. Protecting storm drains is very important because many of them lead to stormwater ponds that are connected to lakes or rivers. Many storm drains are even connected straight into navigable waterways. If you ever detect that there's been a spill to a stormwater inlet or you see a sheen on surface water, report it. We will discuss how to report and who to report it to in more detail in later slides. Protecting storm drains is very important because many of them lead to stormwater ponds that are connected to lakes or rivers. Many storm drains are even connected straight into navigable waterways. If you ever detect that there's been a spill to a stormwater inlet or you see a sheen on surface water, report it. We will discuss how to report and who to report it to in more detail in later slides. What is a navigable waterway? Well, for the purposes of reporting spills, it can be surface waterways such as streams, creeks, rivers, lakes, or oceans. It could be a wetland that drains to a waterway. Waterways can be intermittent or seasonal, but there is a defined flow pathway to clearly navigable waterways. Spills of any amount that impact, involve, or threaten state waterways must be reported to the National Response Center and the State Watch Office. This slide shows the reporting requirements for hazardous materials spills. There are detailed incident reporting guidelines that are located on the Florida Department of Environmental Protection's website as maintained by their Office of Emergency Response. Please follow the link that's at the bottom of this slide for more details. But in general, petroleum releases of 25 gallons or more to the land and any amount that's spilled to water must be reported. For other chemicals, report when an evacuation has been required or if the amount that was released exceeds the chemical's reportable quantity that's been specified in the federal community right to know laws. When reporting hazardous materials spills, the Florida State Watch Office requires reporting within 24 hours of the spill. The National Response Center requires immediate reporting and immediate is defined as within 15 minutes. Florida Department of Environmental Protection maintains a web page that's dedicated to spill response and reporting, where you can download forms and guidance materials. The Office of Emergency Response recommends that if you are ever unsure of whether or not a spill meets the thresholds for reporting to the State Watch Office, go ahead and report it. When you see something suspicious that isn't necessarily a hazardous materials spill, but you're concerned that the activity could harm water quality, please report it immediately. An example of this might be landscape debris or litter being blown or swept into a storm drain. Orange County makes reporting easy with a 311 system 
that also comes as an app for a smartphone. When you make a report using the 311 app, it allows you to take a photo, map it to your location, and add a description of the report. When you submit the report, a date and time stamp are assigned. You can even submit the complaint anonymously. When adding the description, please include identifiers such as the building names, the vehicle license plate, color, make and model, and if any workers were present. Complaints received from incorporated jurisdictions will be forwarded to the appropriate jurisdiction. On this slide are some great compliance resources that you can seek out if you have questions about MPDES compliance. Of course, you can always contact the Orange County Stormwater Pollution Prevention Program by emailing epd at ocfl.net, calling 407-836-1400, or visiting our website where we have a page on stormwater pollution prevention. Thank you very much for taking this training. Keeping pollution out of Florida's waters will take a vigilant, coordinated effort as our population continues to grow and stress our natural resources. But working together, we can make a difference in the health of our water bodies and leave a wonderful legacy for future generations of Floridians and visitors.